I'll begin the demo by logging into the Everrun Availability Center, or EAC. It's a browser-based graphical user interface that enables the user to administer the Marathon platform. Once connected, the EAC populates the workspace with current status. The green bar at the top of the screen is the taskbar. It contains the File and Help menus, as well as Protect, New PVM, and Unprotect shortcut buttons. Here is the protected VM summary. This area displays status indicators in a quick glance format. I can quickly tell if there are any errors, warnings, or unknown states of protected virtual machines or PVMs. This is the Virtual Machine Status tab. It summarizes key information about all resources in a tabular form. It shows the status icon, name, protection level, candidacy, power status, hosts, and pool name. This portion of the screen also contains the Everrun Log tab, which tracks progress and lists information about tasks running on an Everrun protected VM. Here is the resource pane. It displays an expandable tree view of resources on two tabs. The Virtual Machine tab displays all virtual machines or VMs in the pool. The Host tab displays all physical servers or hosts in the pool, as well as pool resources such as snapshots and templates. When I select a VM in the Resource pane, the EAC automatically highlights the same VM in the Virtual Machine status form as well as the Detail tab. As I work with Virtual Machines, the Detail tab changes. It displays context-sensitive tabs that include detailed information related to the selected Virtual Machine. Unprotected VMs have gray icons. Protected VMs have green icons. Each icon also displays either a red halted icon if stopped or a green running icon when running. I have two physical hosts or servers, Fred and George. They're running four PVMs. I also have two unprotected virtual machines. To get detailed information on a PVM, first I select it in the resource pane. When I place the cursor over one of the icons in the Details pane, I can see that the Active Compute instance is running on George and the Standby is on Fred. Since this PVM is running at level 3, everything that happens on George also happens on Fred. The virtual machine is mirrored like a RAID 1 array. Everything down to the byte level is identical on both machines. When I move the cursor to the network icon, I can see that both network connections are good. These are my production network connection. When I place the cursor over the disk icon, I can see that the disk on both systems is fully operational. When I click on the settings tab, I see that I have four CPUs and four gig of RAM allocated to this PVM. I have a remote desktop session connected to the Snapshot Demo PVM. I have three programs running. The Time Cube is a computationally intensive program. Under it, I have a QuickTime video playing for visual confirmation of system behavior. And finally, a command window running a continuous ping to demonstrate network connectivity. In this window, I have a webcam pointed to the back of the two servers. This is Fred and this is George. I'm going to simulate a network card failure by disconnecting the network connection from George. Notice that when I disconnected the network cable, there was no interruption in any of the applications. The time cube continued to spin, the video continued to play, and the pings were uninterrupted. There was no loss of data. Meanwhile, in the EAC, the PVM icons changed to reflect that they are now running in a degraded state. 
This means that they are still 100% functional and available to the user, however, they are running without a backup resource. In this case, we are now using the standby connection. The application is still running on George, but it's now using the network connection on Fred. Now I'm going to simulate a disk failure by disabling the disk drive. This is not just pulling a hard drive out of a RAID array, this is disabling the entire disk subsystem. I'm going to click on the icon, it asks me to confirm, I say yes. It takes a moment for the workspace to recognize that the system is now running in a degraded state. And even though I have disabled the disk, the application continues to execute without interruption. The time cube continues to rotate, the video continues to play, and the pings continue uninterrupted. Again, there is no interruption in application availability. The user has no way of knowing that your host has experienced multiple component failures. The application continues to service the needs of your clients, your users, your customers. No interruption in service, no loss or corruption of data. Now I'm going to simulate a total host failure by pulling the power plug. George is now offline. Notice there was a momentary pause as Everrun responded to the failure. Even though the PVM paused, we did not lose any data. The response to a complete host failure is similar to a system quiesce. All I.O. is paused, but no data is lost or corrupted while the standby system becomes the active one. The EAC now shows that George is offline and Fred is now active. When a host fails, there is a momentary pause as we recognize the context has to switch from the active system to the standby system. But while this happens, there are no lost frames or lost computational accuracy or lost pings. The user never knows a host has failed. The application continues without interruption. I've simulated single component failure, multiple component failure, and total host failure. And in all cases, there was no interruption in the PVM's ability to service the users. They never knew because Everrun kept the PVM running despite all of these hardware failures. Everrun MX ensured application availability despite multiple hardware failures. Now let's take a moment to talk about the repair process. What's necessary to bring the host back online? How complicated or difficult is it to return the Everrun platform back to its original state? If the failures were caused by a failed network card and a failed hard drive card, like in this demo, the steps are simple and during the entire process the application continues to service the users. There is no interruption in application availability or performance impact while Everrun MX repairs itself. First, replace the failed hardware components, then power up the host. Everrun MX will do the rest. When the host comes back online, Everrun MX will recognize it and then it automatically resynchronizes the host and completes the self-healing process. Everrun MX automatically returns the platform to the state it was in before the components failed. Restoring Everrun MX couldn't be any simpler. This concludes our demonstration of Everrun MX and its resilience to component and system failure.